right now, it's really cool. We got Marcel Powers. Marcel ran for the, being a mayoral candidate. We want to see, uh, you know, how she's uh, feeling today, and we want to know what we, she would have done uh, if she's going to be the mayor. Marcel, Marcel, welcome to TFNN. Hi, thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. Absolutely. So, first off, what do you think about uh, Ken Welsh and Robert Blackman? I, th I think they're both nice guys. Um, I see advantages and disadvantages in both camps, but uh, I'm interested in seeing how the next few months play out. Okay. So, uh, let me ask you, what do you think has to be done in St. Pete for a better city? Well, we have to get control of the sewage system. That's definitely a big problem. That's a fact. <laughs> we, we have to look at how we're treating our COVID patients and uh, talk to medical personnel and ask them if there's any extra support or buildings that they need to spread people out so we don't end up creating more of a contagion or allowing the virus to you uh, know, mutate because uh, of the high numbers on hospital floors. So you're talking about the hospitals? Yeah, there's a heavy concentration in our hospitals. Um, I had one person, uh, she's pregnant. She told me she can't deliver on the delivery floor at Morton Plant because they're all full of right. mothers with COVID. So. Yeah, we, it, what's happening here, folks, is four out of 10 people that are walking in to the hospital have COVID. So it's pretty intense. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. Um, I, I look with your platform and included, a, the, let's talk affordable housing here. Talk to me about affordable housing. Well, I'd really like to see the city invest in housing um, directly and pay for the construction and then manage the renting of the units and then citizens would have more control gauging those prices and then that might take the independent market, rental market down because the city will have um, more more flat rate on uh, rental prices. Sure. You know, it's amazing. So so picture this. I, I've been down here for 25 years in St. Pete, okay? But I'm from Boston. And mm -hmm. what ends up happening in every major city, you always hear the exact same thing, housing, housing, housing. What blows my mind every time, uh, Marcel, is that in every downdraft in real estate, the city could have bought the whole city. Anyone could have come in in fact, I know for a fact Habitat for Humanity was actually selling lots instead of buying lots when they should have been. So what do you do about something like that? I mean, people complain about it when it's high, but guess what? You live here. There was plenty of time to, you know, everything was for nothing. So why didn't someone do something? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, there were certain families that did things and invested uh, smart. I... I don't know how our governments really operate. They don't go into business skills, like thinking like a private individual. For some reason, they have like a weird way they go into real estate bartering. It's almost like, to me, they're just like giving away land for free for people to develop it when the land has a really high value. And as a private citizen, if I own that land lot, there's no way I'd let it go for those prices, you know? So what you're saying is, I mean, because the only land that the city's given away to is a nonprofit. So you're saying that the nonprofits should pay more I'm money? When they they bring in a, a developer to develop the land and and uh, they buy out the land, they buy it for way cheaper than what market value would be. Well, no, no, that's not happening. I mean, there's right here, right now, uh, any type of land that's going. I mean, they get appraisals for it. Well, I just give you an idea. I mean where the new hospital is supposed to go with the insurance company, uh, mm -hmm. that's a $5 million deal, but that's not going to go through until it goes out to the public. Right. All right. I mean, yeah, it, that's true. it goes out to the public. It does, you, you know, it just that they kind of divvy it up for you and me. I mean, <laughs> that's true. I can see that. Yeah. But there are a lot of incentives for um, developers to build affordable housing, true. So. So when you, okay. so so let, let me, outside of the affordable housing, okay, s small business. T talk, let's talk about small business. I know you said uh, the the bars. Is is someone trying to shut down the bars at midnight around here or something? No, that was earlier in COVID. That was like months ago when I was talking about it. Uh, Pete Bolin actually got uh, with a bunch of restaurants. I think that's what inspired him to enter the race. 
is because for a minute Christman was talking about that, but there was heavy backlash on that. I see. For a minute they wanted to close down the bars at midnight, but you know the the restaurants all struck back on that, and it became like a big issue, and they quieted down about it. So when they were talking about closing them down at midnight to stop the spread of COVID. Right. Right. So what do you think the um, what what should would be one of the first things that the whoever wins this uh, race, which is Ken Welch or Robert Blackman, what do you think they should do? I, I imagine Ken's going to win the race. And um, and why do you imagine Ken's going to win the race? Uh, he has such a he got 40 percent of the vote. OK. Already. And so just looking at projections down the road, I think uh, Ken's going to. So let me ask you something about that, because that's intriguing, because I know when I read your, the bio, you, you have a big concern about South St. Pete, and Ken Welsh has been a uh, commissioner for 15 years, mm -hmm. and South St. Pete hasn't changed. Yeah, I hear that a lot from South St. Pete, too. So that was... so, yeah, I mean, there's that whole aspect of it, and there's... I don't know. I don't really know what Blackman's proactive uh, solution for South St. Pete would be. I would like to see that, you know. What do you think the solution is? I think the solution is to um, take the money that's allotted to improve uh, South St. Pete and to put it directly into the hands of community leaders down there on the south side. And when you say community leaders, who specifically? specifically? Well, I know, uh, oh, they're running the market down there on uh, Sundays. Ramona, she does a good job. There's, um, I don't know, there's like Corey Givens. There's a lot of good community leaders down there on the south side that would, um, I think you'd have to talk to people and get more, get, get more of a basis on like, okay, what, how, what has been your barrier of accessing um, services? Why aren't you like going to close to kids? Why aren't you, you know, why don't you know about these organizations and doing more communication and outreach? And why aren't you reaching out for services? Because a lot of times they feel like, you know, someone has, there's like gatekeepers that they don't feel comfortable going to. Yes, I see. Well, listen, um, it's a pleasure. Um, well, before you go, I wanted to plug my husband's. I see you guys are investors. So uh, oh. we have Kenwood Organic Produce. Which is our... Go ahead. Say that again. I'm sorry. We have Kenwood Organic Produce, which is our produce delivery service. But we're working on building an app that will be like Locotopia. Okay. But, um, but on the computer with like an avatar so you can go to local booths. It's called Magic Carpet. So if you guys have any small businesses, Local to St. Petersburg. Okay, will do. Thanks so much. Stay right there, folks. Come right back.